What's happening, people? Welcome back to another episode of Ruse Reviews, and today you join me for another app review. So, let's get into it. First of all, I have to apologise for the lack of reviews recently. Uh, as most of you know, the world's gone into a bit of a meltdown situation at the moment. I'm in the UK, and we're all in lockdown here. So, I spend a lot of time in this office, and hopefully I'll spend more time chatting to you guys. But this downtime really doesn't get boring when you have apps like these. This app is Amalgam by Mark Kirstein. So... Let's get into what this is. So initially when Mark posted about an app that he was gonna release, I thought it would be just one app. I thought it would be the Streets app um, by John Archer, but it turns out Mark had other ideas in mind. So Amalgam is actually four apps in one. What you get is the Streets app. You also get Timed Out, which is a multiple outs effect. You also get Watch, which is where a spectator can name anytime they want and it appears in a photograph on your phone in your gallery uh, on someone's watch face. And you also have Word Search, which is by Harry De Cruz. So I'm going to show you this sort of app look, the layout currently, because as most of you know, I'm a huge fan of how Mark makes his apps really user friendly and the layouts within the apps just here. And as you can see, there are the four apps, but it says season one, which also means there's going to be season two, season three, season four. It could go on, we don't know, which is an amazing idea. And when I initially spoke to Mark about it, I was just talking about reviewing the Streets app. That was one that I think will be sort of like the flagship app of these four and the one that will draw most people in, I think. And he was like, yep, just hold tight. And I just kept seeing all these new apps coming up that he was posting going, yep, I've got a new one coming out, got a new one coming out. I was like, that's, that's a lot of apps. And I didn't realize it would be working this way. So it's an amazing idea, very inventive, very cool. As most of you know, I don't like to review things unless I go out and work them. But unfortunately, due to the current situations, there is no work happening. There, I'm not able to leave my house to perform anything for anyone. Which is why I've had to come up with some sort of way to um, test that these apps will work in the real world. And for me, that is the girlfriend test. So my girlfriend, who literally probably can't stand magic right now, she knows that it's what I do 24-7. She kindly helps me out to sort of test these apps or test these tricks and I get gain the reaction from her. She's a massive skeptic. She's not easily impressed by stuff. So now I have this new way whilst we're in lockdown to be able to test these effects for you. So let's just quickly break each effect down individually. The Streets app, which is what I would have purchased this package for originally, is based on an effect by John Archer. The effect itself is genius because it uses the map on your phone. I think the fact that we carry our maps on our phones all day, every day, they're on there. It's such an organic thing to use. I'm a huge fan of apps that use uh, maps, especially things like, um, I, I used to use City Prediction a hell of a lot. And the idea of using a map on a phone, I think is, is a brilliant idea. Having updated it from John Archer's effect, it's, it's brilliant. It works flawlessly. There's also a huge addition by Andy from The Jerks, which um, if you have his app, it allows for the gyro rotation aspect to work in your favor, the gyro rotation peak. That's what I use, that's one that I performed to my girlfriend yesterday. The justification for having the screen turn to you is so clean and it allows for such a clean performance of this effect. So there are two ways of performing this effect. Essentially what you're doing is you're giving the spectator the maps on your phone, they can scroll in anywhere in the world, this is just one version, anywhere in the world onto any street. They remember that street, they scroll out of the map so that you can just see whereabouts it is in the world. You look at them, you do a bit of pantomiming, whatever you want to do, and you are able to tell them what street they are thinking of from anywhere in the world. This is the version I do. This is called the legitimate version. The classic version, which is based on John Archer's effect, there is some memory work involved, and it works for both UK and US streets. There is also another edition by Andy from The Jerks, where you don't have the fish for the letter so much, but you get the spectator to think of something that associates with the road that they're thinking of, which I think is a brilliant idea, getting them to think away from the actual road itself and giving them something visual to think of. So, timed out, app number two. What is timed out? Well, it's a multiple outs app. Some of you may have seen my previous post for photo out, which was by Mike Phillips and Alex Ward. This in a similar frame has a very similar idea, but the execution is completely different. So let me just break down one of the effects that you can do with timed out. Imagine giving your phone to a spectator face down, you get them to think of one of five ESP symbols. They can generally think of any one, say they think of the star. You get them to turn the phone over, go to your gallery, open up your pictures, and the last picture, the only picture in your gallery that pertains to what they're thinking of, is the star. This can also be done with a drawing, so you could draw an ESP symbol, place it on their hand, they name any one they want, they turn the phone over themselves, and it's the drawing that you have predicted. But this can be done with anything. There's already two presets in there for ESP symbols and dice, but literally anything you think of, there are custom presets that you can set it to. So, 
The actual method to get this to work is pretty unique. It's very sort of exciting when I saw it. I wasn't quite sure what to think about it. I had my own trepidations because it is a new method and I've never tried it before. But when I tried it on my girlfriend, it worked 100%. I was sort of a little bit worried that I wouldn't be able to get what I needed to get accurate. But what did happen was completely fine. And I think a lot of people might worry about this initially when they get the app. But go out, try it. It's, it's really a lot of fun. I think Mark's done an excellent job of making this as hands-off as possible. App number three, watch. Watch is an effect where you can show a picture of a group of people to your spectators and they can name any time they want. It's a completely free choice. You zoom in, they can continue zooming in to a spectator's watch in the picture and on that watch is the time that they named. So this app for me is personally the weaker of the three. Not that I think it's a weak app by any shot, but just for me personally as a performer, I probably wouldn't use it. The actual input method itself is a little bit daunting to me. Maybe that's because I haven't really practiced it or gone out and done it. I'm sure a lot of people will be shouting at me in the comments saying, you need to go out and try it, you need to work on it. And yeah, you're right, I probably do. But it doesn't seem like something that I would actually use. That being said, the actual method of achieving this is so deceiving. It is fooling. It allows you to be able to do the input in plain sight as people are watching your phone. And what's also amazing is that you can do this with any picture you want. You can just go out, you can have a picture of yourself with your Apple Watch on and you can do this effect. But mentioning that, you can only really do this with a digital watch or an Apple Watch. If there was an analog option, that might be quite cool as well. I know people have mentioned it in the Facebook group. And app number four, Word Search by Harry DeCruz. Word search enables you to have multiple word searches on your phone, you give it to the spectator, they swipe through, choose a random word search, and by they cover up the words that are in the word search at the bottom, they allow you to see the word search in its entirety, turn it back around and choose a random word. After telling you what that word is, you're able to tell them exactly in the word search where it's positioned, what direction it's going, and all of that giving you superhuman-like powers. This, for me, at this current point in time, is one that I haven't actually tried on my girlfriend yet, but I have had a play around, messed with the method. I sort of try to make a few little tweaks to see how I would perform this effect. One thing that I will say about all these effects is the methods to achieve them are so deceptive and so devious, but they will take a bit of effort from you. The bit of memory work, whether that be mem memorising the input or memorising some words or whatever that might be, there will be work that you have to put into this yourself, which is great. Like, everyone should put work into apps. Apps shouldn't just do all the work for you. You need to do the work to make these apps look natural and real and organic. One thing I like about the Word Search app is you have general justification for looking like you're thinking about something. It's a bit of a weird thing to say, but I love those little moments when they're built into routines. The fact that you have to access some memory and some skill to make this stuff happen is justified because you are making people think that you have remembered the columns and the squares and where words are going in this word search. So by accessing that memory and by giving them this image that you are remembering what's on their screen in front of them, it's all justified, it all makes sense. And it gives you a lot of breathing space to be able to perform this effect properly. So normally I do good and bad points about this. Um, I can't really give good or bad points about this because there's so many aspects within each individual app that people will like or dislike or some people will find things better than other people. It's not about that. The fact that these apps are all grouped together is absolutely brilliant. The fact that you can just buy them as a package and you've got four things to work on straight away, I think is so cool. The amount of work that Mark puts into these and all the other contributors from John Archer, Harry De Cruz, Andy from The Jerks, loads, it's, it's all the work that must go into making this stuff happen must be immense. So yeah, I can't actually wait to go out and get out of all this stuff and um, go out and perform these apps live for people in real performance situations. So once again, congratulations, Mark. Congratulations to all the contributors. This is something that I think will progress. Obviously it will do because there are many seasons left to come, but you can tell that each app has been worked on and worked on well. One app hasn't just been left out just to fill the gap of four. There are all four well worked out, thought through apps. That's it guys. There's a link below. I've linked a little link below to the app store where you can buy this app package from. Go over, buy it. It's about 55 pounds, UK pounds or something around there, maybe a little bit less. I should have checked. Sorry, but it is all there. A great price for four amazing apps. That's it from me, guys. Stay safe, whatever you're doing. If you're isolating, stay indoors, do your bit, and we'll all get through this on the other side. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next review, and I'll see you very shortly. Ciao.